Wasn't there a movie where like, like six guys or something? Shrek, I think they're thinking about. Although she lives with seven men, she's not easy. Dylan, spell socks. S-O-C-K-S? You just said it is what it is in Spanish. It is what it is. S-O-C-K-S. That's your ice cream. Santa Fe. Welcome to Little Globe TV. This is our first episode of 2022 and it's called Beneath the Surface. I am joined today by uh, our Little Globe artist and team member Dylan Tenorio. Very happy to have him here with me in the studio. Hey Dylan, did you know that today is National Cold Cuts Day? No Katie, I had no idea that today was National Cold Cuts Day. Did you know that it was National Soup It Forward Day? which is a day about giving love and generosity through soup. Hmm. I did not know that. What a coincidence. I do feel very loved. And speaking of souping it forward, today's episode is about beneath the surface and looking backwards and forwards at, um, at stories here in Santa Fe and this place that we call, call home. Um, like I said before, we have taken a little bit of a break from Little Globe TV, but we have been really busy with other projects. We've been working with other regional nonprofits to create short films. Um, we've been uh, part of the exciting Midtown Engagement Partnership, which has been doing a lot of great work um, the last few months. And we brought in some really amazing new team members, two of, which, uh, two of whom you will meet later in the episode. Um, we've also been kind of looking beneath the surface of our own organization and our role in the community and looking at how we can really use story as a way to bring people together and as a point of connection. And speaking of stories, Dylan, why don't you tell everyone about some of the stories that we'll, we'll be hearing today? Okay, Katie. We have a mixture of stories. Some are very light and short, and some are also more in-depth. For example, there's the story of a local newspaper salesman, and also the inspiring story of Hip Hop University's youth, and a funny, uh, whimsical story of a gathering of pigeons. So this is what we have in soup for you all today, and we hope that you are able to grab some cold cuts or a bowl of soup and enjoy LGTV8 Beneath the Surface. Well, they're at the West, Western Saddle, right? You're the Western one that said scene. it. Western Scene. Oh, and then there's a saddle. It's a oh. motel. But there's a huge flock of pigeons that live there. They get fed there, I found out recently, but they've always been there since I was a little kid. Would you walk along Sears Road? Mm -mm. Just driving, driving in the mall. Or JB's. Remember JB's? It's Wex now. Go there a lot. Because um, they had a really cheap breakfast buffet, and that's what my dad was always after. But it's surreal. So there's very few arterial roads in Santa Fe, and that's the, the lifeblood of Santa Fe. It's Cerritos Road. I do go to work every morning, and the best part about that road is that flock of pigeons. And they're huge and they get bigger and bigger and then smaller and smaller and sometimes they're not there at all at all i think that they go somewhere and we have to find out where that is and i will also mention that yes there was a flock at dunkin donuts my dad would he was such a cool guy because we we're really poor and you just find like things that were cheap and amazing so he would take us to Feathered Friends, but it was right next to Dunkin' Donuts. So we go to Feathered Friends, they don't go get some donuts, and then the pigeons were above. Our actual Feathered Friends. 
but I'm hoping they went back and forth. So when the burnt seeds out, they go to get the donuts. Just the zoo, the Santa Fe Zoo was like everywhere. He made it that way. Be, you know, be as you come forward. Be, you know, I'm hungry. Backwards. Be, be hungry backwards. What is for yeah. breakfast? Am I right? <laughs> you know what? I just realized my name is the same forward as it is backward. Bob, Bob, Bob. Ha! Huh? Bob, Bob, Bob. My name is a palindrome. Oh, okay. Wow. Can't be bothered before noon. Well, I'm. I mean, I haven't had my burrito yet. <laughs> okay, but I, I, I was thinking about my mom. She was a madam, and my dad drove a race car. Ah, <laughs> yes. The sagas of your mom, the madam. Was her name Hannah? Did she get in her kayak and go off the radar? <laughs> How about that burrito? Any ideas pop into your head? Oh, sure. Yeah, let's go to Taco Cat. <laughs> The reason why I am here in Santa Fe isn't necessarily a clear answer. My best guess would be to extrapolate on the contents of the varieties of breakfast burritos as I walk around the plaza. I realize one truth, that I prefer green chili inside my breakfast burritos. You couldn't get me to put red chili into one. This isn't necessarily a condemnation of red chili, which I do like uncertain New Mexican dishes. And if I may, Christmas in terms of chili is an abomination, but that is only my opinion. As I walked the plaza for the third day, I ate this delicacy that is served at most local restaurants called a frito pie, though it has caused me much in the way of hard pan. I've been through many and much tougher scenarios. How great it had been to vacation here, to feel the heat in my mouth take on the brutality of the sun.
Good, buddy. Go. Find ball. Find the ball. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this stuff? Um, well, a few years now. You should, you should get into uh, catching me doing some uh, hand painted t-shirts. I know, I do want to get you doing that. Let, it, let the sun come up a little bit. I got some, uh, I got one that I will, will put together. I started on it and I'll be finished with it. Where did you get gold? I got him around February. Really? Yeah. Uh, I had him fixed, so yeah. <laughs> he's been doing good. He likes to play ball. He likes to run around. You ever you ever done any photography on uh, on birds? On birds? Yeah. Not not too much. But you you should do that. Must have dropped it. Sorry, I wish I had one. I, I know where this was. I'm going to have to go get it. Take time out. Okay. Winter time, go get it. I want to get in the sunlight. Sun feels good. This is crazy. If you flip the word swims upside down, it still spells swims. My name is Alejandra Avila. I'm a B-girl from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I am one of the creators of Hip Hop University. I've been dancing since I was five years old. Um, I started in competitive dancing, and one year my coach hired uh, a crew of b-boys and b-girls to teach us how to break and from there that's when I fell in love with breaking. When I found breaking I really felt I belonged. It taught me a lot of life skills, a lot of morals, life ethics that allowed me to be my better version of myself. And I feel like I have to share my my breaking with others because it saved my life. As a B-girl, my goal is not to be famous or to make a lot of money, but more so pass on this craft that was given to me to others who may need it. Let's go. Come on, hat. Yes. Let's go. 
I really wanted to find a way how could our crew, how could hip hop elevate the youth. The beginning of Hip Hop University was all response to the pandemic of 2020. For me, it was very important that our kids felt supported during this crazy time. So I just thought maybe we can find a way to adapt to these times and continue to be connected, continue to grow with each other, and continue just to keep doing what we're doing. We had free art classes every weekend. Um, we had break-in, we had DJ style writing. We had so many different classes. Right now, we needed this bridge, you know? So it actually became something very beautiful for the youth and for the adults, you know? And I'm just really happy that we got to unite. Well, that was a video about Hip Hop University and Alejandra Avila that I got a chance to work on. My name is Anaid. I'm a filmmaker and entrepreneur. I started collaborating with Little Globe as of October of 2021. Uh, the first time that I went and worked with Little Globe was actually at the Midtown Block Party, where I also met another amazing human, uh, my friend Elsa. Elsa, how are you? I'm doing really well. Muchas gracias. Encantada también de haberte conocido y de compartir el tiempo que hemos compartido hasta entonces, hasta ahorita. My name is Elsa Lopez, and I have been collaborating with Little Globe also very recently. I got to be at the Midtown Block Party, where we had the opportunity to hear and also record dozens of interviews from Santa fans who were telling us all about their vision about what the Midtown area will look like. Uh, this party was organized by the Midtown Engagement Partners and it was a wonderful opportunity where we got to hear music, eat wonderful food, but most importantly really get a sense of the heart of Santa Fe, its people. We worked on this piece together and we hope that you get to enjoy it. We all need to just come back together and we need to come up with solutions for all of us, not just for some of us. That the values would be inclusive of uh, many walks of life, many different backgrounds and kind of be accessible to a lot of different types of people. I would want the Midtown site to feel um, comfortable and to where like it's fun and like you like enjoy being there. It's integrated into the life of the community in multiple ways. It's like a common place where people would be for lots of different reasons. A place to congregate, to socialize, to learn, to enjoy. Education in, in one way or another. It could be on the sort of the academic side or the artistic side. I think they need a big area for the indigenous people like a powwow grounds. We've always been about our culture. So it's like, you know, I like to see art exhibits. I like to see, you know, markets. Facilities for the elderly. It would be nice to see young people and old people. And I think it should meet those multiple needs. More public spaces where people could just go and be without always having to pay money. We have a full theater here, so I like to, to see the arts be integrated into some programming here. Small businesses we would like to bring in and just have kind of a multi-layered um, living structure here as well. A land trust so that it stays in the hands of the community forever. It's just sad to me because a lot of the people I went to high school with, they can't afford to live here anymore. Probably just a matter of time, then I won't be able to afford to live here anymore, you know? And a lot of us locals who were born and raised here, we just can't afford it anymore. It's too expensive. Over the years, uh, it got more expensive and then we we're forced to like basically move out of Section 8. And so, I'd probably just like to see like affordable housing. So many things in Santa Fe are really oriented outwards, facing towards tourism. So something that that kind of faced inward and was like a a, a center that that could run into people. 
better communicate with one another, be able to be creative with one another, be able to dialogue with other families with a sense of self-determination. A willingness to like be uncomfortable um, and in that space of learning. It is up to us that decides our future. Right now, we must let the youth and healing lead the way. I started with Munson. No, I started with with uh, another gallery, and and then went to Munson. That was I showed there for about 25 years, and uh, had many solo shows there. You inspire me as an artist, and I just want to know what inspires you. The inspiration probably comes while in the middle of while you're painting, you think, oh, yeah. maybe I should go this way, maybe I should go that way. Oh. I remember as a kid, I had uh, role models of painters. Mm. Pasadena was full of old painters, and we had a, next door to my house, there was a studio, and I remember calling up on the roof and, and uh, looking down and seeing him paint, and I thought, that looks good, I think I ought to do that. When did you move to New Mexico? 69. 1969. Yeah, so what is that? That's 40, 50 years? 50, yeah, like 52 50, years 50, ago. Yeah, yeah, of course I love the New Mexico landscape and it's just endlessly interesting. The colors all, all across the whole rainbow. The first time, one of the first times I came to your house, my grandma Suan wanted to take me to work. She was watching me at the time. I remember uh, walking around your house and looking at all the beautiful paintings, looking up at them. And when we were about to leave, I said, bye, Uncle Doug, and I gave you a big hug. I remember that. You were about this high to <laughs> at that time. You can, you can see a difference in the faces of people. Many little kids come in, you know, and they just, they're, they're not curious at all about things, but you, you were very curious. exploring your house and that was as a kid for me I think what's inspired me who knows maybe someday I'll inspire a little kid that's good I like that to see that there a life can be made at art and with art and uh, of all sorts music painting films all the things and so making art is not a bad life it, uh, it hasn't been for me it's been a enjoyable life and uh, yeah I'm uh, I'm now 89 and maybe have a few more years to go I think I do what advice would you give to a young artist starting out well I can do the <laughs> the uh, advice that O'Keefe gave everybody just close the studio door and that's it. Yeah, that's the best advice. In other words, get to work.
Hello, I am Aurora Scabito. I'm so glad to be back. Wait, no, go. I have to go again. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello, I'm Aurora Scabito. I am so happy to be back with Little Globe TV. This is my son, Tensido. I've been really busy with him, but it's also been very fun. And I even had time to do an awesome project about his first snow. So, I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> and that's our episode tonight. Thank you so much to all of the artists and storytellers and community members for sharing your voices and your creativity with us. And also big thanks to the Little Globe team for putting this episode together. Um, and also thank you to our funders and supporters who make doing this work possible. Uh, McCune Charitable Foundation, NEA Artworks, Digicom Learning, and New Senda Credit Union. We are very grateful for your support. And we have a lot of really great episodes coming up that we are working on um, over the next few months. And Dylan is going to tell you more about episode nine. Dylan. Our next episode, episode 9, is a collaboration between us and Santa Fe Art Institute. It is about uh, the story of Midtown Campus. And uh, we hope that you can check out their Tilled podcast, which also explores stories and people in Santa Fe. Thanks, Dylan. We're really excited about our second youth episode that'll be taking place this summer. So please stay tuned to hear stories from youth from across Santa Fe. Um, it'll be really fun and exciting. We also would love for you to submit your own stories to Little Globe TV, and you can do so by going to our website and sharing your short films, animations, uh, music, skits. We would love to include that in the next episode. Remember that Little Globe TV is stories about Santa Fe by Santa Fe. So please go to our website and share your creativity with us. As we close out tonight's episode, we would like to honor some dear friends who have recently passed. Some of them are people that we have met through Little Globe TV and sharing their stories with the Santa Fe community. And others are people who have been deep supporters of our work over the years, and they will be sorely missed. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.